Hello everyone and welcome to Nickel Scout. Today on Nickel Scout, we'll be talking about the Arms of Canada, also known as the Canadian Coat of Arms. As a young boy, I was always fascinated by the Canadian half dollar and the coat of arms depicted on it. There are many different parts to the design and I've always wanted to know more about why each part was added. In this video, I'll be breaking down the different parts of the coat of arms so you can learn more about the symbolism that makes up the 50 cent piece. Throughout the years, the reverse design has changed, and I'll be highlighting the differences by reviewing three distinct different years. We'll be looking at 1956, 1984, and 1997. Last time on Nickel Scout, we took a look at some of the Canadian 50 cent varieties. You can find a copy of that video here or in the description. The 1956 is our first coin. Its composition is made of 20% copper and 80% silver. This is an example of the Tudor crown or Henry VIII's crown. Later coins depict St. Edward's crown. On the left we have the English lion and on the right we have the Scottish unicorn. The lion carries the Union Jack and the unicorn carries the banner of France. The shield, or echelon, is broken up into five different sections. The background of each section is known as the feel. From left to right, top to bottom, we have red, yellow, blue, blue, and white. On top of the field are the elements of each section known as the blazon. First we have three golden lions in the top left symbolizing England. In the top right we have the red lion rampant of Scotland, surrounded by a double border of fleur-de-lis. In the middle left we have the Irish harp of tar, and in the middle right we have three fleur-de-lis making the royal banner of France. Finally in the bottom of the echelon we have a sprig of three maple leaves. When dealing with a design that has a mythical creature like a unicorn, you're bound to come across a rainbow or two. The second coin in our review contains 100% nickel. It's the 1984. Here we have the St. Edward's crown, which replaced the Tudor crown in the previous version. Next comes the golden lion, wearing a crown and holding a maple leaf. Below the lion, I've marked out in purple the wreath, which is typically white and red. The golden lion, along with the wreath, make up what is known as the royal crest of the United Kingdom, with the distinct difference of a maple leaf. The helmet really solidifies the medieval history of the coat of arms. As a child, I imagined donning the helmet in preparation for battle. The mantling would have draped from the helmet over the knight's body to further protect. One side, typically cloth, and the other, metal. The 1984 version of the mantling shows a traditional, tattered mantling. Here we have the supporters again, just in a smaller design. Below the supporters and shield is the motto, Amare Usque Amar, from C to C. The bottom of the arms is known as the compartment. Foliage consisting of the Tudor Rose of Wales, Thistle of Scotland, Shamrock of Ireland, and French Lily reminds us of what a knight would have rode upon in each land. Here we have the echelon again. Same key components, just a smaller shield. And here's another little dose of the rainbow to go with the Shamrock of Ireland. The third and final coin in our review is the 1997, containing 100% nickel. The 1997 version of the mantling has stylistic maple leaves in two different colors. This subtle change evokes the image of a knight riding through the rugged Canadian wilderness with maples flying. In 1997, the ribbon depicting the Latin phrase, they desire a better country, was added. Let's finish things off with one last rainbow. I hope your hunts go well and you find your pot of gold.